Hey y'all, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. This week I have about $30 to work with and I'm planning on making several dinner and breakfast options, although some of them can be used for lunch or for snacks, so it just depends on how you want to use this meal plan. Now, if you have any suggestions or anything if for future videos, if you want me to use a specific type of protein or you want to see certain types of meals like slow cooker meals, freezer meals, or even if you just have a specific budget that you want to stick to and you want to see how I can use that budget, let me know now in the comments because I'm always looking for more feedback and suggestions for my future videos. And it really helps and I take your comments really seriously and really go with your feedback. So let me know. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And of course, subscribe to see more meal plans just like this one here. And of course, lots of budget-friendly meals. So let's get to the store and get shopping. Here is my list. Let's see what we can get today. First, I want to get two bags of this elbow pasta, and it is 29 cents each. This is seven ounces, so I'll get two bags. It'll be about 14 ounces, a little bit less than a pound. Next, I'm going to be getting this kielbasa for $2.89. Then I'll get one roll of sausage for $2.29. Then I'll get one can of corn for 63 cents today. One can of chili beans for 85 cents. I do want to mention they also have really great prices on organic beans too. $1.16 for pinto beans, dark red kidney beans. Down here they have $1.19 for organic black beans. So if you prefer the organic options, they do have those here, which is really nice. Next, I'll get a large can of crushed tomatoes for $1.55. Then one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes for $1.25. And a regular can of diced tomatoes is 99 cents. And the one with basil and garlic and oregano is 95 cents. This one's a really good option if you want to add a little bit of extra flavor. That's a really great price. So I don't know which one I'm gonna to get today. I'm gonna to go ahead and try this one today. I've never used this one in the recipe that I'm going to be making this week. So let's see how it goes. If not, the other one's not that much more expensive. So either one I think would work. So let's just see how the flavor turns out. Next on my list is some buttermilk pancake mix. I'm gonna get this box here for $1.95. Although they do have lots of other options. They have protein pancake and waffle mix. Um, this one is with oats and this is original. These are $3.49 and we love these. But since I'm on a very strict budget today, I'm just gonna get this kind. And we've never tried it, so I'm hoping that it's good. Next, I'll be getting one full pound of cheddar. I like to do the extra sharp cheddar. This is $3.79. The extra sharp goes a long way, or just regular sharp cheddar goes a long way. So you have to use less to get like that big flavor. So that's why I'm just gonna get extra sharp today for $3.79. Just use a little bit in all my dishes. Go. I'm looking for the Jiffy cornbread mix and I don't see it. I see a couple of tags for other brands. Like this one, the Martha White, but I don't see it. So I think I have one at home though. So if you're shopping with me, just grab one box of that um, Jiffy corn mix. I think it's maybe 59 cents or something like that. So grab one of those if you don't have one at home. Next, I'll get one 10 ounce can of enchilada sauce here for $1.85. Next, I need one bag of long grain white rice for $2.65. And this one is a three pound bag. I will be using some bouillon for this week's meals. However, I have a giant container like this at home that I bought for around five bucks. So that's what I'm gonna be using. But if you don't have that, you can get some chicken bouillon cubes like this for $1.79. They may have them around a dollar at Walmart too. Then I'll get four bananas for 49 cents a pound. Next, I'll get some white onions for 49 cents a pound. Then a bag of spinach for $1.49. Then a three pack of bell peppers for $2.15. Next, I'll get two pounds of ground turkey for $2.75 each. Then last, I'll get a bag of mixed veggies for 99 cents. Here's everything that I'm getting today. I'm spending $33.25. The first recipe I want to start with are these sausage pancake bites. They were a huge hit in my house and they're super easy to make. So first I started by just browning some sausage and then in a mixing bowl I added the pancake mix and some water until combined. Then I added the cooked sausage and the cheese and just mix until that was fully incorporated. Now I just poured that batter into a regular muffin tin. You can use a mini muffin tin 
or you can even just put this in a regular casserole dish, whatever works for you. Just make sure that you grease everything ahead of time so it doesn't stick. And then we're just going to put that in the oven at 350 degrees for 18 to 20 minutes for muffins. If you're making an entire casserole dish full, it may take a little bit longer, maybe 25 minutes or so. And that's it. You can either eat these now or freeze them for later. This next recipe is a banana pancake. Now you can just make regular pancakes if you like. I just wanted to try something a little bit different this time. So I took two of the ripe bananas and a little bit of oil and just mashed that until it was completely smooth so that way it would be easier to mix everything in. Then I just added my mix-ins, just some pancake mix, water, cinnamon, or you can use cinnamon sugar if that's what you have, and then some maple syrup, or you can use honey. And the water that I used, I used a little bit too much at first and added more pancake mix later. So I just adjusted the recipe for less water when you see it. Now I'm gonna let that sit for about five to 10 minutes so it can just thicken up a little bit before I start making these pancakes. And these ended up being a really huge hit with one kid and not the other. So it just depends on if you really like bananas or not. You can always just eat the bananas on the side and just make regular pancakes. Next, I decided to use the rest of my pancake mix to make a drop biscuit and some gravy to using the pancake mix. This is going to end up being a sweeter biscuit. So what I did is I just added the pancake mix, some water, some salt to kind of balance out the sweetness and pepper. And then I was going to add a little bit of cheese in here, but I decided because I just have a tiny bit of cheese left after all the dinners that I just added a little bit to half just to see how it went. And again, these are sweeter because it's pancake mix. There's a lot of sugar in pancake mix. So if you had Bisquick, of course, this would work better for that. But in a pinch, one kid again like these and one kid didn't and I just made a regular gravy using the mix and again it was a little bit sweeter I'm just going to show you really quickly I just used even amounts of butter or any fat that you have on hand and flour and then just season that with salt and pepper just make sure you cook out that flour flavor just make sure it's nice and golden brown before you add the liquid I'm using milk but you can use anything that you have on hand or even just water to make this gravy just to make sure you only add a little bit of liquid at a time and just stir until it's completely incorporated so you don't end up getting lumps and again this is a little bit of a sweeter gravy so you might need to add a little bit more salt but it did turn out really tasty for the first dinner idea I'm making a sausage and cheese macaroni sort of like a goulash of sorts but first I'm going to brown my sausage and I'm going to be removing half of this sausage to use for that breakfast that I showed you just a few minutes ago I'm just going to brown it all at the same time because it's all going you know somewhere eventually. So I'm just going to remove that and of course take a little bit of the grease out if I don't want the grease. And then next I'm just going to add my can of diced tomatoes and any of the optional seasonings. This is really where you add a lot of the flavor. So make sure you add all seasonings that you love. Maybe some chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder. If you don't add any seasonings, it's not going to have a ton of flavor. So add those seasonings. Then I added a little bit of pasta water to really make this a little bit thicker and to help that cheese sort of melt and not curdle. Then I added the cheese and I always recommend bringing your cheese out of the refrigerator while you cook everything so it's a little bit more up to room temperature. That's what keeps the cheese from curdling too, just making sure that it's not ice cold when you add it in. Then I just added my cooked noodles and that was it. Super easy dinner idea for this one. Next, I'm making one of our all-time favorites. We don't eat this very often, but when we do, it's super fast, super easy, so delicious. It's just a sheet pan kielbasa with veggies and I serve this one with rice. It really is super fast. You just dice all the vegetables. I'm showing you the way that I cut bell peppers because it's a game changer. I got that little tip from Gordon Ramsay. And then I just slice the onions, put it all on a sheet tray and season it. I like to do all the seasonings, salt, pepper, oregano, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika. Just season until your heart is content with this one and just mix it up with your hands or some tongs. And then just make sure that you flatten everything out in one layer. So it makes sure that you can get everything evenly roasted. And I'm going to go ahead and roast these veggies at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or so just to give those a head start. If you like your veggies not as cooked, of course, you can cook it all together with the kielbasa. I just sliced the kielbasa and added it to the tray and just gave it a toss and then put it back in for about 20 minutes until that was nice and brown. You're not going to believe how delicious this one is. Again, I cooked some rice on the side while everything was cooking and just served that with it. It was really delicious. Definitely a highly requested dinner by the entire family and I just can't get over how easy it is to make. I really hope you try this dinner. This next dinner idea is just a super easy chili. Now I used to make chili every single week and then I just got tired of it and stopped making it so much. But chili is just one of those meals that really 
is enjoyed by the whole family and is great for leftovers and super easy to make and it's all in one pot. So it's just one of my favorites. So first I'm just going to take half a pound of that ground turkey, add it to a pot. Since it's ground turkey, I'm adding a little bit of oil too so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And then I'm adding all the seasonings. So I'm adding chili powder, paprika, onion powder, some cumin, salt, pepper, and then I'm just going to brown that break it up, and then get it all cooked through. And again, I'm just seasoning throughout. I really want to have a ton of flavor in this dish, so I'm adding a lot of seasonings as I cook. And if you don't like any of the seasonings that I listed, of course, just omit those and add whatever you like. Then I added a little bit of onion, maybe about a half an onion diced, and just sauteed that until they were a little bit soft. Then I added the green peppers. I like my green peppers to have a little bit of a crunch still, so I don't cook them too long before adding everything else. But if you like them more cooked, just add them with the onions. Then I added some chili beans. Mine are from the freezer, but of course just use a can of chili beans. I don't like to drain the chili beans because a lot of flavor is in that liquid. So I just don't drain or rinse them, but that's up to you. Then I added the crushed tomatoes and again, more seasonings. Now I'm adding a ton of seasonings just to flavor the chili as a whole and not just the meat. And I like to add marjoram, but that's optional. I just really feel like it gives a nice savory flavor to the chili. So if you don't have marjoram on hand, that's okay. Don't go picking it up. It's just something that I like to add. Then I'm just going to let that simmer for about maybe 10 10, 15 minutes and then just serve it up with all the optional toppings. I like shredded cheese, diced onions, Greek yogurt or sour cream, hot sauce, everything. Also, I like to add a little bit of frozen corn or canned corn, but frozen corn is my favorite just to kind of add a little of extra veggies and some sweetness. Now, again, that's just optional and I served it on rice, but if you don't like rice with chili, you can serve it with cornbread or whatever you have on hand. I really hope you love this one and give this one a try and let me know what you think. This next dinner idea is one of my most popular recipes I've ever shared. It's a one pot bell pepper casserole and I made it on a whim one day when I wanted some stuffed green bell peppers, but I only had one bell pepper on hand. So this is what I ended up making. So first I started by browning my ground turkey or if you have ground beef on hand of course you could use that or any meat substitute if that's what you'd like to do. And I'm just browning everything and seasoning it with Italian seasoning and some salt and pepper and garlic powder because I'm going to be using the other half for something later. I'm going to be removing the other half after I've browned and cooked everything all the way through. It's just to help me for my meal plan the entire week to kind of get a head start. I just like to get it all browned at once. And of course with ground turkey you're supposed to use it within 24 hours of thawing it out and so cooking it kind of extends the shelf life in the refrigerator and if I needed to freeze it or anything like that it's a lot easier to thaw out once it's cooked. Now I'm going to be adding my onions and I'm going to go ahead and saute those until they're nice and soft and translucent and I'm seasoning as I go as well so I may add a little bit more garlic powder here and there just to season throughout. Then I'll add about half a bag of that spinach and you can add as much or as little spinach as you like but it does wilt down quite a bit. So once that's fully wilted down then I'm going to add my green bell peppers the can of diced tomatoes, a can of water, or if you want to use broth, you certainly can in the future, some Worcestershire sauce, that's to taste. I like to add a lot of Worcestershire, then some cumin and a little bit more garlic powder and some salt and pepper as well, just to get everything really nice and seasoned. I really like to add a lot of garlic to this one. Now I'm going to be adding my rice and then deciding whether I need more liquid or not. Just make sure you add enough liquid to fully cover everything so that way it doesn't get burned and it just cooks it all the way through and we're not having any crunchy rice at the end. Then we're going to bring that to a boil, reduce the heat, let it simmer covered until that rice is fully cooked through. About 18 to 20 minutes depending on the rice that you're using. And then just give that a good stir, add some cheese on top, put the lid back on for maybe one or two minutes until it's fully melted, and then just serve it on up. This one really doesn't need any toppings. It's full of flavor, super delicious. If you're going to try any dinners, please make it this one and let me know what you think. I love it. Next is a super fast and easy turkey and rice casserole. I'm made this one while I was running out the door. I only had about 30 minutes. And so this one really does come together fast. Now I'm using a little bit of this bouillon. So again, I mentioned at the store to pick some up if you don't have any, but if you don't have the extra money for that, you really don't have to just use the seasonings that you have on hand. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of oil and add my onions and saute those until they're soft and translucent. And I'll add my cooked turkey that I cooked up in my last dish. And then again, season it really well with some garlic powder and paprika. And then I'm adding the rice and toasting the rice for just a couple of minutes. Again, I was in a hurry. Then I added the one bag of frozen veggies and then that mixture of the bouillon water. I used about two and a half cups. You can use chicken broth if you have any on hand too. Then again, I brought that to a boil, reduced the heat, simmered, covered for about 18 to 20 minutes. Again, depending on the rice that you have, then just give it a stir and just serve it up just like that. This one is full of flavor and it's great for leftovers. I love it. This next recipe, I saw a couple people making this in their videos. I made a couple of tweaks and decided to go ahead 
and give it a try. My husband said it's one of his all-time favorite things I've ever made. First, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of oil to a large pan and adding my half pound of ground turkey. And I'm going to really heavily season that with taco seasoning. You can use any seasonings that you have on hand, but I recommend maybe a chili powder, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, the works for this one. Make sure that that meat is really nice and seasoned. Once that's fully cooked through, I'm going to add it to a bowl, then add the chili beans. And again, you can drain and rinse those. I usually don't because I like the extra flavor, but it does make this more moist if you don't drain and rinse it. Then I'll add the canned corn, the Jiffy cornbread mix, and the enchilada sauce and some taco seasoning. A tiny bit of water, but if you don't drain and rinse the beans, you probably don't need to add any more liquid. If you do decide to drain and rinse the beans, just add a little bit of water until everything comes together and looks similar to this. Then I'm going to grease a large casserole dish. You can use any size. You can use the 8x11 or the 9x13 or even a round one or muffin tin. Whatever you have on hand is perfectly fine for this dish. You're just going to have to check to make sure that it's fully cooked through with a toothpick before you finish taking it out of the oven. Now I'm just going to spread this all evenly and add a little bit of cheese on top for a little extra flavor and then I'll put that in the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes and just put a toothpick in to just make sure it's pretty much fully cooked through and it's nice and golden brown on top and just serve this one up with all your favorite taco toppings and that's it. I hope you all enjoyed those recipes and at least got a few ideas for things to make in your home. Again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. You can subscribe to see more and don't forget to put that little bell on for notifications. So every time I post, you get notified right away. Also, I have a lot more meal plans on my channel, so you can check those out if you're looking for more ideas and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.